Okay, it's nine o'clock, so I think we'll go ahead and start uh, our meeting. And uh, Christina Daniels, if you would please do a roll call. Good morning. David Talley. Here. Tammy McDonald. Alyssa Dewan. Here. Michael Dixon. Mark Beimeister. Here. Kathleen Weigel. Leandre Camel. Here. I think we have a quorum. Uh, now, we're, as always, we'll uh, go ahead and do introductions if we start down at the end. Uh, introductions. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, Anna Patricia Morales. I'm the Deputy General Counsel. Heather Frederick, Chief Financial Officer. Alyssa Dobbin, Audit Committee. Dave Talley, Audit Committee. Teresa Michael, Inspector General. Carrie High, Counsel to the Inspector General. Christina Daniels, Inspector General. Morgan Vagan, Inspector General. Uh, Michael Dixon, Audit Committee. Leandre Camel, Audit Committee. Mark Bymaster, Audit Committee. Chantal Knowles, RSM. Annette Pena, Design Director. Okay. Uh, first on the uh, agenda is to uh, approve the agenda. Are there any additions or deletions from the agenda, Terry? No additions. Okay. I'll ask for an approval of the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda as presented. There a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Pass 5-0. Uh, next, take a minute and look at our, our April 21st uh, meeting minutes. And after you've had a chance to review those, I'll accept a motion to approve. A motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Pass 5-0. Okay, public comments? Hearing none, now we'll move on to the Inspector General report. Okay. Good morning, everybody. First, I'd like to announce we have a new audit committee member, uh, Blair Littlejohn, retired, the lucky man that he is. So Ms. Morales will be here um, trying to help us stay on track as much as anybody can in this committee. Um, so we appreciate you being here. We'll try to take it easy on you, at least for the first couple of meetings. Thank you. Nice to be here. <laughs> The next thing I want is a little bit of a housekeeping. Anybody here that's on the audit committee that needs their ID is ready to expire in October, let me know. Um, I know we have two people so far, and we'll start doing the process now to see if we can get it before they actually turn them off. And mine expired already. Yours expired already? Yeah, June 30th. Okay. I'm done. Right. And I don't have one. <laughs> okay, well. Okay. I actually walked in with it, though, with the front desk. All right, their security's good. All right. Is yours all right? Okay. All right. So that's that we will get those taken care of. And if any time, if you don't have your ID, please let me know if you're having problems with the ID. Sometimes they turn them off. I always think it's my note that I've been fired, you know, when my ID doesn't work. Yeah, that's what the CFO told me in Tallahassee. You know? As long as your ID works, you're good. So every time there was a computer glitch, I thought I got the pink slip. So we're good there. Um, other than that, we do have a promotion in our office. Uh, Nicole has been promoted to audit supervisor. So, congratulations. Thank you. Um, Eileen Steinhoff, who is our, um, our IT auditor, just announced she's retiring. So uh, it kind of caught, caught us off guard, but she decided, decided you know what, for 21 years, it's enough. So we are going to be looking for an IT auditor, which is very hard to find, yeah. extremely hard. Um, if we can't find one, we may look at growing our own and putting somebody through the arduous course of getting that certification. 
But if anybody's out there, wants to join the IG team and become one of these smiling faces, you know, please apply. Um, next, uh, I don't think we have anything very unusual. We do have the elections or the nominations that we need to do, and that's going to be next on the agenda. Okay, well, at this point, I'll turn that motion over to you, Terry. All right. Now, we originally, we had planned on doing this last audit committee, but we couldn't get a quorum. So we worked a little bit late in doing this, but we need to um, see if anybody in, uh, is interested here. Board policy 1.091.4D, consistent with policy 1.09, governs audit committee chair terms of service. Under these policies, a committee member is limited to four consecutive years of committee chair. The current chair, Mr. Talley, is currently in his fourth consecutive year of service. Uh, the aforementioned policy permit a chair to extend his term limit based on a recommendation from the audit committee and approval of the school board. Um, we can also, if somebody's interested in being the chair, we can have nominations and elections. So first I'd find out if anybody's interested or if uh, we want to extend Mr. Talley's term as the chair. What is the... Is Hi, it's Kathy Weigel. I would like to extend... I second that nomination. I think, I, better, I think you better ask Kim first if he's willing to take that. Yeah, it's, great, it's great that everyone agrees. Of course, he this is a voluntold situation here. Yes, of course he does. Are you willing? Sure. Okay, I'm willing. Okay. All right, at this time, I'd like to call, okay, we did the open discussion. I need a motion. Is that, to let me ask you a question. Is that an extension of uh, one year, four years? What is it? One year. So it's coming to come back to us next year. Right. Okay. And it's not unusual at all. Um, there are quite a few that I think the court committee quite often has the same okay. chair. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion to extend Mr. Talley's. A motion to extend his, his term for another year. Second? I'll second. second. All right. Vote? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, 5-0. Good luck. <laughs> I don't know if I take that personally or not. It might be against me. Good luck. Yeah, oh, no, when I was, yeah, and Tammy. So we're now at 7-0. What? What happened? Well, you can't vote. All right. All right, now we have the... Um, Vice chair. We have, okay, cool. I, I think it might be advisable because strictly reading the policy, we have to have the board approve the chairmanship. And um, if that happens, then he will be elected at what's known as the organizational meeting, which is technically the first meeting in office in August after the start of the school year. But because we didn't have that meeting or we're having it now, I would recommend that we allow the existing vice chair to continue to serve and then upon next meeting if there is board approval of this recommendation mr tally takes the first spot and then we hold the elections as though it's our organizational meeting that would be my suggestion just to follow the procedures the next next meeting all right so we will do the extension letter to the board and send that forward and we are on to our next agenda item <coughs> We have the audit reports. Uh, Nicole, I think you're going to do the first report, correct? Correct. Okay. So, okay. This is the results of our unannounced cash count at Temp Sample Schools. The unannounced cash counts were performed by three members of our audit team. The objective of the cash count were to determine one the extent of compliance with district procedures for money collections, and two, if all the monies in the drop safe were properly accounted for. We look at a total of 10 schools. This school was selected based on the findings from the FY22 internal accounts audit and our ongoing comparison of the school money collections and bank deposit record. We visited the 10 schools between March and April. We counted and compared the collections in the safe with the drop safe lot records. We also counted change funds for those schools that had change funds. 
During our visits, we count roughly $40,000 in cash and checks. After a few days of the site visits, we chase all the collections we count to the internal funds accounting system and the bank account. We found that all the collections were recorded in the accounting system and deposited into the school's bank account. No money was found to be missing. There were no compliance issues found at the following five schools. The remaining five schools had some minor non-compliance with money collection procedures. As far as the types of non-compliance, they are similar to what we find in the annual schools audit. Those non-compliance include free schools, some sponsors did not deposit their daily collections in the safe by the end of the working day as required, with delays of up to nine working days. For two schools, there were collections without supporting money collector reports and corresponding entries on the drop safe law. At one school, schools, some sponsors did not keep the yellow copy of the money collector report. At a separate schools, some money collector reports were not complete with the source of collections, such as the name of the student. I'm open to any question. You may have. I have a couple of questions, if I may. Sure. Number one, number one, you made reference to fiscal year 2022 for the selection of these, these particular schools. What is that? The ranking based on the findings are from the school during the internal funds school audit. 2022? Yes, the, the so, so current one. So were these 10 the top rank? As yes, correct. Top, top rank based on the risk. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. You're welcome. The second question I have is, um, when your table two, your table two, um, is that the same person who had the problems two years in a row? No. Different people? Yes. That's interesting. Are they being supervised? What happens is that um, when school hire a new staff, if this is their new year's first year, they, all, you know, they always have some non-compliance occurred. So, so this is, that's why we say this is minor non-compliances. I, I understand it's minor, but I'm, yes. I'm just, just trying to follow the logic of the procedure that was followed, that's all. I understand. Thank you. Okay, are there any other questions of Nicole? Are there any comments? <laughs> if not, I'll entertain a motion to accept the approval of this report. I'll make a motion. Second. Second. I'll second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Pass 7 0. Okay, next uh, review of money collections at Glaveview Elementary. Randy? Good morning. Oh, yeah. Uh, this audit uh, was completed by. Uh, 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 Susan Miller, the audit supervisor, she's uh, on vacation today. That's why I'm tipping to do the presentation you know, on behalf of her. Uh, this uh, special review was initiated based on a referral from the accounting services department. They found a number, a lot of uh, delays in uh, processing the process, you know, through their day-to-day -day review of the drop safe logs and compared it to the deposit records for the schools. And then some of the deposits as much of four months in delay in processing and deposit of money. So that's why uh, uh, accounting services, you know, contacted us back in uh, late January and, uh, and then uh, expressed the concerns about the collection process and the deposit. So we started this review and then first we uh, performed the two diagnostic cash counts at the school. First one is conducted on February the 9th. And uh, what we found, okay, Okay. The, the, uh, the primary objective of this is to see whether all the uh, money collections were properly accounted for and processed and deposited into the school bank accounts in a timely manner. Number two is to see if all the money is you know, and then deposited. And then number three is to see if there's any non-compliances with the district's procedures in safeguarding the money. 
and our first cash count found that there were more than seven hundred dollars in cash in the drop safe. There were no supporting documentations, you know, for those collections, and they were not recorded in the drop safe log either. And then the uh, according to our discussions with the uh, treasurer. She said that the monies were coming from the Valentine's uh, fundraisers for the sake of the troll. And then, after more than two weeks after our collections, we found that the monies were deposited into the account. Meaning that even after we did the cash count, the treasurer did not stop processing the monies and put the monies in the bank until two, month, two weeks later. According to the district guidelines, they should deposit all the monies at least within a, a week, on a weekly basis, because our ferry services come at least twice a week you know, uh, to each of the schools. And then our second cash count was done on March 27, and what we also found was a big delay in depositing the monies. Uh, and then uh, we, what we found was, you know, there were more than four thousand dollars collected between March third and ninth in the safe. But when we go back and look at the bank deposit records and accounting system, the last deposit was processed on March first, meaning that it's more than three weeks that they were not processing anything during that time period. And then, according to the uh, bookkeeper again, she said that she was running out of a bank deposit slips. Excuse me, is the bookkeeper and the treasurer the same people? It's the same thing. I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then she said that the, uh, the uh, bank deposit slips were running out. And then when we uh, go back and look, and because when they request the deposit slips, they need to go to the treasury department. We found out that she did not notify the treasury department until one week later, that is the March the 9th. So even she found that there were no deposit slips, she did not immediately call, you know, uh, record the money deposit, uh, deposit slips. So there's another potential issues there. And then this, the next thing we found was that the money we found uh, accounted on February the 9th, six weeks later, they were still in the safe, some of the money. Those were the coins that we counted on the, uh, February the 9th. Meaning that even she deposited money on the 23rd of February, she did not deposit all the money. She still kept some of the money in the safe for no reason. <coughs> and then we analyzed all the uh, actual denominations and the deposit for the February 23rd and found that she did not deposit the money intact according to the FBOE rules, meaning that uh, if you collected two uh, ten dollar bill, two uh, twenty dollar bills, it should be deposited as is. But she just uh, swap him out, you know, like uh, she put in one uh, fifty dollar bill and one ten dollar bill, something like that. Even though the amount would be correct, but it's not the same as what she collected, and that it shouldn't be. Uh, between July 2022 and March 2023, for the nine-month period, we reviewed all the collection records that were deposited into the uh, school cash accounting system and also on the drop safe log. We found that 42% of the collections were not timely processed for deposits. And uh, what we found was, you know, some of the monies, even though they put it in the safe, but she did not take them out for processing for two weeks later, like 15 days later. And then, even after she took the money out for counting, she did not record the, the deposits into the school cash accounting system, nor put it into the bank for another one to 37 days. So there's a, a big delay. Again, what did she do with the money during that time period? It is really questionable. <clears throat> The third conclusion that we had was that uh, the school did not fully comply with the drop safe locks uh, procedures guidelines. Number one is we found that uh, 
some of the uh, collections, you know, are put in the safe and then are recorded on the drop safe logs, only had the uh, treasurer sign on the drop safe log without a second a person to verify or as a, a witness to confirm that, that those monies were removed from the safe by the bookkeepers to do the processing. And then the second one is after the bookkeepers or the treasurers record the money into the uh, uh, school cash accounting system, the system will generate the so-called official receipts. And then that one, you should have another part, uh, person, maybe the first uh, verifier or another person, to go back and then to compare it and then record it on the drop safe log to, to you know, confirm that, that those money removed by the bookkeepers previously have been deposited into the school cash accounting system. So she would uh, record the uh, official receipt number on the uh, drop safe log. But we found it that uh, the, uh, you know, the second person did not do the same thing or record it on the drop safe log. So meaning that there's a breakdown in the control also. The last conclusion we had was that the school received it, uh, close to $4,000 in donations for use uh, to purchase uh, some, some computers for the school use. But you know, after more than six months or nine months, we found that the school still had not initiated any purchases. So the money is still sitting in the uh, school bank account. It did not you know, uh, do what the donors you know, uh, asked the schools to do. Uh, and also because it's over a thousand dollars, according to school policy, it should be acknowledged by the superintendent. To say that a uh, send of thank you letter and something like that to the donors to acknowledge the the receipt of the donations, but they did not do it. The second one is about the uh, grouping of individual manufacturer reports into one single deposit. Usually those uh, collections were collected by the same sponsors on different days. They should be recorded in the system separately, but the treasurer grouped them all together, meaning that one deposit may include several deposit, uh, collections collected from different days. So that will mix the uh, uh, reconciliation and tracing quite difficult to find out which deposit or which collection has been deposited into the accounting system or not. The last one was uh, we found that two collections, the actual deposits did not agree with the money collector reports uh, uh, totals, and then there were no explanation to describe why there was a discrepancy, what causes the discrepancies. Again, you know, like uh, for the first one, there were more money than what the uh, sponsors recorded on MCR. The second one was, uh, you know, uh, there was a $10 shortage. So again, there's no, no explanation as to what and why there was a discrepancy. This pretty much concludes what we found during this special review. And question? Why didn't they buy the computers? I'm sorry? Why did they not buy the computers? That they did not give us an explanation. Was, was the question asked? Money in there. Was, was the question asked? Yes, we did you know, send it out to the, uh, to the school and then for response. But, uh, you know, the, the, the school did not really explain why, but they said that they are going to make the purchase. I have another, I have, I have another question. This is global. How much time we allocate to these types of investigations on cash for the school <coughs> in our annual budget as a percentage. What do you think that is? What do you think that is? On the unannounced, are you talking yeah. about, or a special, special size? In, in general, you have a mm -hmm. bucket of in your budget to mm -hmm. allocate to this. Mm -hmm. My question is, how much is that? Fine. Well, this is a pretty extensive report for a small amount yeah. of money. Yeah. Usually, I'm just, just questioning. I'm just questioning it because it's a bit. Don't get me wrong. It's material. Any time there's cash moving around, it's material. But overall, for for a department like this, how much time do we put into these types of exercises when when the budgets are all billions of dollars? I I don't have the exact uh, percentage. 
that I can give you. But usually we uh, uh, plan for or uh, allocate about twenty percent of the, all the team's uh, you know uh, resources in those special requests. This is one of it. Sometimes uh, the things may not involve the money issues. When we get the uh, referrals or complaints, of course, uh, the investigations early. We do the preliminary analysis review first. See whether it will be uh, you know more. Uh, uh, suitable for the investigation size to do the investigation, or it will be a more systemic issues or something that the audit side would do it better. So this is an example. This came from the audit accounting services. Is that your group? It, it did. So we were concerned. I got it. Uh, and so we didn't know, based on the not the school not submitting the information timely for a four-month period, whether there actually was missing money. So that is why we forwarded it to the IGs. We were, we were right. happy to hear that, that there was actually no missing money. There was actually more money than what they had actually reported. Uh, but, but we did find that it really just came down to the, the school not following proper procedure. So that's why we're requiring the principal, the document custodian, the school sponsors to retake all the mandatory trainings that we have online. We also sent a team member out to the school at the beginning of the school year to sit with the treasurer as well as the new document custodian to walk them through to make sure that they understand what all the procedures are. And we're going to make sure to just monitor them more closely to make sure that they're submitting timely. Was one of the things that, if I, I may, one of the things that we found that even with a small amount of money, because I look, I understand too, because I can look at an investigation or an audit where we may spend you know, um, three months looking at something and it turns out to be $150. And this is a juice worth the squeeze issue. Um, but what we've been finding is that there's internal controls and process problems, that it's not usually just this one school that's having that. And it's kind of either things have lapsed or the training needs to be redone or there's another issue underlying behind that. Um, but I do understand because we do have limited resources. We are losing auditors and, and you know, all the time. So it, it, I understand your concerns. And we do judge that between either it's going to be an audit or an investigation. Some of these start off as investigations, and then we find out, oh, there's no misconduct, there's no missing money. It's a systemic issue. We'll shove it over to audit and vice versa. So there may be some of that in there that doesn't account for some of the time as well. Um, I have, have a couple of questions. Um, this has been an ongoing concern and issue over the years with the drop safes. And there were quite a few schools several years back that had problems. One of the things that came out of that was that there, it, it reflected on the need for training. Um, so my first question is, is this person the treasurer? Was it someone new? And Well, was it, was it someone new? No. Okay. And, and then the, the second question is, was, was this a school that has had a problem with the drop safe and with the collection of monies in the past? Yes. yes. Okay. That is a whole nother issue now. Now, now we're going from, from, I don't know, to we're, maybe we're doing this intentionally. But to, to also answer your question, so, you know, a uh, few months ago, Accounting services, you know, they tried to start a new process to provide more targeted trainings uh, to uh, the school's employees. So they, we are providing them with the name of the, 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 uh, the, the staff who are not complying with the internal accounts procedures so that they can provide more time and targeted training to those people that they are not in compliance with any of the procedures. Maybe a headache and, you know, a supplement on this. And then if it, it sounds like you went out twice, and if I were the treasurer and you came out and were doing an audit, I'd make sure I got it right. So if you came back again, you wouldn't have the same problems. So I'm wondering if there is a feeling or an air of it really doesn't matter, oh, well, we'll slap our wrists, and there's nothing punitive or there are no um, consequences for or not being, not following the policies as it relates to cash. So we have, you are correct that we have had systemic issues with the drop safe log, and they were continually coming up as part of these uh, annual internal audits. So what we did is we added a position within the accounting department that reviews the drop safe logs monthly. 
So we require the schools to now up upload them and then they're reviewed. So that is how we caught this within four months rather than waiting a year and a half for the internal audit department to come out and audit the school. But that, that's what we're doing internally to be able to, so that we can identify it, that it's not really an audit issue. We put uh, procedures in place at the district level uh, to identify an issue more timely. And then when we had the issue, then we forwarded it to uh, the audit department, or the IG's department to say, look, there might be some something here. There might be missing money. Please look at When does this become a personnel issue? I guess I feel like that's what Tammy's getting to. Like, because if, I feel like it sounds like training's offered, training's there, and the disparate, like you said, like someone came out like a month later and this, like, slap my wrist once, I'm not doing it again, so, and it was still going on. So when does it get moved from a training potential issue to just a personnel issue? You also have to look at the materiality of the actual audit findings at the schools, uh, because there, there's a lot that we put on these bookkeepers, not only the bookkeepers, but all the employees at our school sites. And so you, you when you go through and you do an audit, I was an auditor in the beginning of my career, a lot of it is you're just looking at, you know, you're supposed to do this procedure, you didn't do it once or you didn't do it twice, and okay, now it's it's put down on, on a report that you're not complying. But, but really, was it intentional? Uh, were they actually doing the work? It just took a little bit longer for them to sign off on it. You know, is there missing money? You have to look at the underlying risk and materiality of these findings and, and and we do not have audit compliance as part of the job performance uh, part of our evaluation it was i believe on the evaluation at some point um, that might have been back probably 10 plus years ago i'm trying to recall but i don't believe that that is part of the uh, the employee evaluation but it does come down to insubordination if they're really truly not following the, the procedures. But a lot of them, when you when you read through the annual audit reports, uh, the audit department does come to us when they when they feel that there is is there are really significant issues at the schools. And I, I would think most of them are just they've got a lot of other stuff going on, and it might not be their priority, unfortunately, because they have a lot of priorities. Heather, when did you add that person in your department? We added that person, that was pre-COVID, so oh. that, that, that person has been there for several years. And it has helped. It has reduced the non-compliance significantly. Okay. Mr. Barbieri can probably recall, uh, he was very passionate about the issues with the drop safe logs. Oh yeah, I remember. Because we would have missing pages of the drop safe log. We have, since we've added that position, there are no missing pages of the drop safe log. And they, because my department reviews to make sure that they're, that everything is documented. Um, it's just, you know, whether they're, they're actually submitting the information on time. And that's why as soon as we, we see that they're not submitting, uh, we notify the audit department to look into it. Mr. Chair, Lee Andre here. The, I, I want to commend, one, the audit committee and all of the policies and procedures that's in place because it appears to me just from this document and the, that policies do exist. So we don't have a policy issue. Mm, personnel, I have a, we don't have a policy issue. And I commend the CFO on your response, management's response, and everything drafted here. However, we have an internal issue at the site itself. And I think, one, I would like to see that the computers are purchased within the next 30 to 60 days, and at least someone could provide a letter, just a statement showing that the computers have been purchased. Even if they are not needed, that's just out of respect for the superintendent and the school board and the donors. So that at least need to occur or show proof that it has occurred. I'm not, the, go ahead. I'm not quite sure. I, I understand the answer. You don't have an answer on that question you asked. Why they weren't hurt. I just don't get it. Six months. I just don't get it. Uh, and I don't think that we will get that answer as to why. Just the administrative answer as to why it did not happen. We just need to ensure at this point that it does happen. Um, because it. There is something happening at the site. More money, less money. It's great that money's not missing. I also want to understand why was there more money in the drop safe as well. So 
Uh, train. Are we convinced there's money not missing, though, truly? I mean, I mean, well, to degree, I think it sounds like... According to, according to the doc <laughs> documents presented to us, there's no money. I know, but it almost seems like there, maybe there should have been even more that we, we don't know. I, I don't know. I just... I would like to, to point out, we have had incidents, or I know of one, um, where a bookkeeper and uh, staff members are borrowing money so there was a delay in deposits because they were borrowing money, using it, and then putting it back. So just because at the end of the day there was no missing money doesn't mean that that money had not been misused during the, the months or whatever. I mean, I know I can't change personnel rules by the recommendation. I think if anyone's handling cash, that should be something that's where it's considered a priority and somehow they should be evaluated on that. I, I know, I, mean, I agree with what you said that, you know, there's... Um, they have a lot of other stuff going on, but, but they're touching cash. cash. I think cash needs to be considered a priority to anybody who handles it, and whether that gets built into some sort of personnel thing or something. But clearly, they're not hearing the tone at the top, then I guess that that's something important. Yeah. And that was going to be my follow up. And cash handling um, should be a part, just from the audit committee. And I think that if anyone has, is, is handling cash, either digital cash or not, paper cash, that should be a part of their responsibilities and uh, evaluated upon that. So it is something we should include just from an auditing perspective, just from our, our space. So that is just something I would, um, you know, yeah. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm carefully walking this, you all. You all know I'm about to, I try to choose my words extremely careful. Carefully, however, this is a issue be, that's beyond the audit committee, but I, I do believe that um, the school site should have some additional um, eyes at this point because if it's ongoing, you have a systemic issue at the site itself. And it's a good thing we're, we're catching it at a school where I am. At the same time, I think it needs to take place of this. This could be an example for cash handling experience um, district-wide. So I'm just... So my concern is that this is not new at the school. This was a, uh, an issue before, and it was supposed to have been corrected through training um, and more oversight, and it didn't happen. And now we're dealing with it again, and it sounds like it's the same individuals, and apparently the training didn't do what it should have done. Um, and we're talking about tra more training again. I don't know how we think we can do the same thing and expect different results. Um, I don't think that's reasonable. And it doesn't appear that there was any, while the amount is immaterial, given various um, mechanisms to judge that, the problem is systemic and it's not following procedures. And you came out and said what I was thinking and that was money was being used personally and then put back and that's why you have the long time lag for um, reporting and depositing. So Andy pointed out there were checks that they expected like three 20s but it's a 15 and a 10 or something. So I think clearly something was being done. So the fact that this school or the treasurer is not being evaluated on something, something that they're responsible for, for I find to be a, a um, problematic in, in terms of personnel and in terms of how we um, supervise and manage our staff and their responsibilities. And I think that's something that needs to be spoken to. And if I were doing something like this and there was, I didn't get a slap on the hand or I was told that, you know, it wasn't, my performance wasn't judged and I didn't have to, um, there was nothing punitive, I'd keep doing it too. If that, that was, was the kind of person, person that I am, I'm not going to take money from anybody else. Let's, let's be clear about that. that. <laughs> um, I, think I think we have a bigger problem than just what we see on a, on a cursory. Yeah. I, I, don't know, I don't know if there's someone here from the school district to talk about the personnel piece um, or if you disagree with our our thoughts and, and comments. I mean, it, it should be built into the overall evaluation, but I'm just trying to think of the, the you know the, the actual words, there's nothing on this thing about, the evaluation is generic for all of us to use, all departments. It's not specific based on job code. So it should be built into that, but there's nothing specifically on the evaluation that would be related to cash for the bookkeeper. 
So maybe, maybe I wasn't clear in what I was saying. I mean, I thought that that was uh, the specific question we're asking, but definitely, uh, you know, complying with policies overall should go into the evaluation. And, and in this, you said it's a repeat finding. It is a repeat finding in the sense that the school had issues with the drop safe log. They were not issues like we identified this current year where they hadn't been submitting the drop safe log for months. Do, do, do you know if something, because like, like I know where, you know, let's, let's say where I've worked in the past, past if something happens, it doesn't, doesn't have to be at my annual review, I could get written up at that time. time. Do, do we know if this person has been written up or gotten, gotten anything added, added in their personnel, personnel file? The principal did provide a response, and I, I cannot recall if she did But if she didn't mention any about the performance evaluation or anything like that, she just said that uh, the treasurer or the bookkeeper will receive uh, you know, additional training and make sure that she will comply with the procedures. Yeah, I was just curious, because I, I understood Michael's point about materiality and all that, but I still think at the end of the day, anybody would look at us and say any money missing is material. So I, I think this is an important thing that we did. And, and I, I feel like, like I thought Frank might have had a, a question or comment. I saw your hand at one point. Did you have something? Frank, did you have a comment? Yeah, I, I think that what the IG should do, I know that after 15 years on the board, I know that the principals are definitely afraid that school board members are going to find out something's wrong with the school. They don't want it brought to our attention. Not that they're trying to hide it, but just they don't want the embarrassment. Um, I think, Madam IG, you should issue situations like this during the time of the board meetings when I ask if you have anything to report. I think you need to report at this school. Um, you don't have to mention the principal's name or anything, but this school's had multiple findings. It's over. Because that way, everybody that's responsible, the principal's ultimately responsible for what goes on at that school. If the principal's her school is called out publicly at a school board meeting, I would think that that principal would do more than just a slap on the wrist with, you know, she, it's up to the principal whether or not that employee stays. There or not. So I, I think that these kind of things, I know that they're in the audit report when you give it to us. I'm not sure how many of my colleagues actually read through the audit report. Of course, I'm here and I do, but um, I think you need to put that in, the, in, the, in, your, in your report when you report to the board that, that situations like this have occurred, specifically mentioning the school so that um, the principal takes note that, that the board knows exactly what's going on. Yeah, there are a lot of times when we have repeat issues and um, we're, we're very cautious, cautious in the IG field to step into the discipline area. So, because I can't recommend discipline, I can't participate in the discipline process. Um, I do have some of the same concerns that everybody here. My feeling in general is human nature, you will, you will push it and you will, until somebody stops you, there's some type of punitive. Most people will continue to do whatever they can get away with. And management has to make those determinations that they're going to take action. And I know that it, this has been a very hesitant or very um, different area in the district that I've seen from the state. Um, the state side, it would have already been a written reprimand immediately. Um, but it's, it's a different culture, different environment here. So I'm trying to adjust to not take it like I'm still with the state of Florida. So I'm trying to learn where the boundaries are of when we bring those to the attention of, I think this is a serious problem. And I yeah. believe that, that two instances would warrant a comment to the board. I, I, I'd like to follow through with Mr. Barberi's comment. I would like to go on make a motion on this report before we approve it to state a report findings, which we might want to vote and agree to. However, I think it's important that we go on record as an audit committee to the state what we're talking about right now. And that way, you can reference the exact audit committee response, not just bring it up to the board, but it's an official response on this report. Now, what, the, what does that mean? I think, we, I think we said, this isn't the motion, but I think we said it should be part of a job description for this person, number one, somehow. I don't know how you do that. That's not my job. If it, if it can't be done, it can't be done. But I think as an audit committee member, I would like to see that happen, number one. And number two, um, the second part, 
second part here was that there should be more than a response from a, from a principle here that doesn't recognize any, well, that's the way we do business. I mean, I don't know how you word this. It's not my job to do this. It's my job to comment on this report, and I'm making two comments that I would like to see as part of our report. That's my point. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I still have a couple questions. Why don't we second it first, and then we'll go to questions. There's comments, comments on, on the... On the report? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, the, my problem it was... We, we still have a standing motion on the floor. Are you going to withdraw, withdraw your motion, motion for the time, time being, Mr. Dixon? No, I want it standing. Okay. That's the question. Uh, okay. Go ahead. That, the, it doesn't say, but was the currency that was substituted, was those, was those amounts also part of the delayed deposits? What was your question? I mean, I the, 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 the currency that was substituted, was, that, was those deposits also the delayed deposits? Was that part of the delayed deposits? Yes. Okay, so, so and the other issue is, if, if that is part of the delayed, it, that could be part of where someone's borrowing from there and then putting the money back. And then the second part is, if, if it's not that, it could be someone making change and, and and was it found that that person that where the money was swapped wasn't done by someone who was supposed to have access to the safe, or was it, or do we know if it, there is, or do we not know who did that? It's most likely it's the uh, the treasurer herself. Now you can look at uh, the page four and five of the report, table two. Okay. Okay. Here are the. Uh, the money that we counted on the uh, February the 9th, and then they were deposited on the 23rd. And then the next page on table three, we shows you know, the, uh, the currency discrepancy by denominations. So the delay was uh, by two weeks' time, approximately, give and take. And then when we did the comparison, we see these are the, you know, the discrepancies between the denominations on page three. I mean, the page, table three. Yeah, so that's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about that. That just seems like it's a sign of someone borrowing the money. I think one of the additional issues that there was is because they're commingling so many deposits. Yeah, it's hard to tell which one is from which fundraiser. That's why it's so important that they keep these separate. Uh, but when you have things stacking up for so long, it, it, and uh, granted, there's supposed to be limited ability to access those um, safes. But as we all know, um, the combinations are not changed every year. People can share combinations and without having a camera on there and somebody would double you know, like you would at a bank, it's almost impossible to know exactly who could have, especially over a four-month period. Yeah, yeah. because that's what I'm worried about with the, with the substitution is that someone's borrowing or that you have someone like a cashier's clerk that's not supposed to have access to the safe. Going, you're going, oh, I need change, but somehow they do have access and they're going in there and making change. Yeah, the current practice is the treasurer has one, only one half of the combination to access the, 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 the safe is another staff member at the second part of it. Only the principal can have access to the safe by the, the, uh, the principal herself. Okay. So nobody else has the full combination, you know, according to the procedures. According to procedures. Once money is deposited in the drop safe, it's, not, it's supposed to stay in there intact. They're not supposed to go back in and tamper with it. Isn't that the way the policy is written? And then they're supposed to, within a certain period of time, they have to make the deposit, right? Unless the, uh, the sponsors uh, put a nook on the drop safe lock to say that, that do not process it or something like that because it's still waiting for some sort of additional verification or information. Otherwise, once it's put in, this, in the drop safe and then recorded on the drop safe lock, 
they should not go back and then to remove it. Only the no one keep making change from correct the drop safe. So that shouldn't be happening anyway. So I feel like borrowing. You know, I want to second Michael's motion, but can I ask for a minor modification to it? Um, is to do all those things, but the direction for from the audit committee to the IG is to, after three repeat findings, that should, after re, three repeat findings at identified school sites, that should go to the board spelled out in your report to the board, not just um, here's the report. So that notification, the board need to hear it, or at minimum, the superintendent. So someone needs to hear it so that these repeat findings will make their way um, to the superintendent from the audit committee through the IG's office. So that's the modification if you will accept. Um, and I'll second. And if I, if I could ask the committee to consider adding some sort of risk assessment or materiality because some of the findings are, are really um, you know just not a signature just not when you look at the different audit um, procedures there are ones that have different materiality and when I'm looking through it you know I there are some some schools right where it's, where it's just the, the timing it's not anything to do with cash it's you know everything was done but, you know, for example, like a field trip. They did everything right regarding the field trip, but they didn't, no, that one's not a good example. Um, <laughs> fundraising. They did everything related to fundraising. All the money is there, everything was raised, everything, but they, they maybe didn't fill out the form timely. You know, but they did everything else right regarding that. Are you comfortable with a $5,000, um, or is that too much? Well, it's not even the, the dollar amount. It's almost looking at which which ones are the findings to say, or, or which ones are the procedures that are really more material. And then also within that, I think a dollar threshold as well. And that is something I think even the, the principals have requested as well. You know, we have like a red, yellow, green as to, you know, this school has a bunch of red findings versus a school could have repeat findings every year, but they're... They're, they're they're not considered, considered significant findings. Do we keep it to cash? Yeah, keep it. To cash. Yeah, keep it, yeah, keep it, keep it, keep it to cash. cash. That's, that's fair. fair. That's fair. That's yeah, because yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not comfortable with I'm deciding which rules are important and which rules are, are not important. That that, that kind of takes me out of the fact finder, very objective, um, saying okay. This one's not important. This rule here, right. is, but so I'm not saying not important. Not important. Well, well, it just doesn't have the same threshold. Repeat Level of having to deal with cash at school. I agree something is probably good because, I mean, I have no idea. Maybe there's other issues because, you know, to your point, it's ultimately the principal's responsibility. So maybe there's other issues at the school that, you know, superintendent would like to know this and didn't realize it was going on because, like you said, maybe a stack of a billion papers. So the amount is immaterial, but the, the policy adherence and compliance is the issue here. So, so I, I, I wouldn't weigh, weigh them equally. Hey, Michael, do you want to restate your motion? <laughs> Can somebody read it back to me? <laughs> All right, I give you the, the bottom, bottom line. The bottom line is make it part of the job description. Um, number two, and evaluation. Job description and the evaluation. But there was a second part also that I mentioned. Response specificity. Specific. Being specific, specific in the response and addressing all the concerns. That, that yeah, and it, and, it, and, and it should be as a committee, we've recognized this is an extension of what we started several years ago, four years ago, five years ago. We're just adding to it. I'd like that part of the report also, that we're constantly looking at this and trying to improve it. I think the addition of this person is great. That's great because we didn't have that. It could be a real mess out there. I, I, so I would put that in there. I'm making this up as I go. I'm sorry. Um, uh, cash only. Cash, cash only. only and cash only repeat, repeat findings. Repeat findings. Cash only. Repeat repeat findings. Cash only. It should go right to somebody, whoever it goes to. We go to the board. I don't know who in between goes. We report to the board as a committee. Yeah, what, what I was looking at was preparing a letter for um, Mr. Talley's signature. 
and then I will present it to the board at the next board meeting. That's fine. That's my motion. And that's my second. I second. Okay. Uh, discussion? I think Kathy had a comment. Yes, I was trying to figure out, in, it got so kind of convoluted. Whose evaluation are you speaking about, Mark? You said it was attached to an evaluation. The bookkeeper? The principal? The assistant principal who's in, oh, maybe overseeing? Uh, I think it's the treasurer. Okay. Just I think it's the treasurer. Yeah, I'm not going to. Oh, no, no. No, no, no. That's not what we're talking about here. Okay, we've got a motion and a second on the uh, floor. Is there any further discussion? I just want to be clear about what the motion is. <laughs> All right, from what from what I have is we have a motion on the board. We're going to the we're going to prepare a letter um, for the uh, chair signature to be presented at the next board meeting by myself during the IG report. In, in which we state there's ongoing continuous improvement that the audit committee is doing and this, as part of that we have identified some issues related to this report involving uh, treasurer job description does not include um, adhering to cash deposits as well as the evaluation um, that the response from the school uh, principal needs to specifically address those uh, findings within the report, as well as any re repeat findings of three or more involving cash should be brought to the board's attention through this mechanism. Is that? I think that's good, but somehow in the letter, the drafting of the letter, I think it's important to, to um, be specific as it relates to compliance with school established policy. Mm. Yeah. Right. Agreed. Okay, and that's our right. concern. Any, any further discussion on yeah. the motion? We have I would like, like I would like our conclusion put into this report. report. Please. What, what we're recommending. recommending. With this recommendation? Yes, yes. put it in, in this report, because we're, we're going to vote on accepting the report in the additional bond. Oh, yeah. yes. And, and, and I, I do have an, an update regarding the computers. Um, they have, they are currently at the school site. They haven't been paid for yet, um, but they are currently at the school site. And we are, we, it was when uh, my uh, staff from my department went out there to, to give a, a, a training to the, uh, the school-based staff, she did see them sitting there. And then she directed them to work with purchasing uh, so they can uh, make sure to finalize and, and get them processed and paid. Okay, is there any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. Oh, Kathy? I guess my question is, too, uh, part of this, how will, would we know whether the principal has addressed it or not? So, for instance, when I had a bookkeeper who violated something, I brought him in, or even a teacher, I brought them in, I did a memorandum of incident, and I attached it to whatever it was, the purchase order, the money's collected form, whatever it was, so that when auditing came in, they could see that, yes, I saw it was a problem, I addressed it, and we fixed it. But I'm old school, so I don't know how we as a committee would know if the principal sat down and wrote them up, or, and how, do you see what I'm saying? We should probably do another surprise count, what you think? Go back out there again? The point is, and, I don't, and, and my question is, um, is that in violation of their, of their contract that, personnel stuff is being seen. I, I mean, I don't know how that works anymore because I've been out of it so long. Back then, I didn't quite care if I was grieved because I wanted auditing because that was so important to me. I wanted auditing to see. I saw a problem. I fixed it. We, we have, have seen, seen that, that on reports where the principal will put down that I've obviously the counseling or corrective action as part of that. And they will put that usually in the response. Uh, also remember that we will follow up on this audit you know, in six months, so we will get responses on our recommendations and what has been implemented and the corrective actions. So after this, the principal may look at it and decide that there may be a counseling, coaching, verbal, whatever that may be, and we'll be able to report that back to the board. Or to the okay. Okay. <coughs> also, to add, also to add to it is for all those that are related to school internal funds, especially here, 
our annual internal funds audit, uh, auditors will also do the follow-up too. So in addition to the prior year's uh, annual internal funds audit findings, we will also follow up on those special reviews audit findings too. Okay. Also, won't, won't you be able to see, it says the response from the principal says that she will have to sign verifying that she attended all monthly internal account bookkeeping training. So you'll be able to evidence that she has complied or not by virtue of her signing on a monthly basis that she has done the training. I, I remind the auditors uh, to look for it uh, at the next uh, audit. Frank? Yeah, in response to Dr. Weigel, um, if there's three findings at that school with the same treasurer, obviously somebody's not doing what they should do because if we have personnel that are on three different times and not been following the same process they've been trained on, then the principal should have removed that person uh, from that position. So I think that that responds to Dr. Weigel with, you know, we don't know whether the principal's done what the principal's done. Well, the principal at that point should have removed that treasurer, I would think, because you can only counsel them so many times. Three types of the same offense should require that the employee be moved to another position in the school rather than stay on. It's the principal's responsibility to make sure board policies are followed three times with the same employee. Somebody's not, you know, overseeing that that employee properly. Send them to counseling all you want, but by the third time, they should not be doing it again. So um, I think the principal is not doing their job if there's three findings with the same treasurer and it's not brought to the attention of someone. The regional office should have got involved or the superintendent, somebody. That's the point. I mean, because sometimes you didn't have the power to do that. Even though I'd, I'd say written them up for the same thing and say I have a problem for some reason, somebody drags their heels or whatever it is. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page with that, and that, that there's, there's ways to check to see um, that that's being dealt with. <coughs> okay. Okay. Heather? I, I have one more uh, complication to, to add. Unfortunately, when Mr. Barbieri spoke, the turnover rate of our treasurers is, is high. It's around 30%. So when you're saying repeat findings, you know, three times, Mr. Barbieri, you specifically said, you know, with the same bookkeeper, I think the way that it was written is at the school, and so that would raise the question that it is very likely that they will not have the same bookkeeper for three years in a row. So if the school has the same finding three years in a row and it's a different bookkeeper, you know, just, or, or is that what was intended, or is it at the school level, or is it at the personnel level? I took it as that it was the same individual, okay, it was the finding for three times in a row, that that same treasurer or bookkeeper with that same specific issue, that, that was my interpretation. Next time. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that that, to clarify that, because there is significant turnover in that role. And then also just reinforce the committee that, you know, my department, I said, is, is now doing face-to-face uh, -face training already went out to the school, like I said at the beginning of the year, met with the principal, the bookkeeper, the new document custodian, um, and she's going to, uh, the bookkeeper is going to attend a face-to-face two-day training, which she did already, but we're requiring, that's for new bookkeepers, we're requiring her to do that again, and then my team is going to just keep a closer watch on the school as well. Okay, any further discussion? If not, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 7-0. Now I'll recommend a motion to uh, to approve the uh, Gladeview Elementary Money Collection Report. I make a motion to approve the report. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. Passes 7-0. Thank you, Randy. Okay, now we'll go to compliance and contract oversight reports, and that'll be uh, Mr. Bob Bliss. Bob? Good morning, everybody. Morning. My name is Robert Bliss. I'm the, uh, I lead the Compliance and Contract Oversight Unit in IG's office. One of our responsibilities is to follow up on all recommendations that we previously made in prior audits, reviews, or investigations. We do that about six, six months after we issue a report, and we follow up with management to request the status of their efforts in implementing those recommendations. 
and we just want to keep you guys updated on recommendations that have not been implemented after six months. So we summarize those on this spreadsheet that's attached to your agenda. It shows there's a total of 12 recommendations that are still in the process of being implemented as of June 30th. And we provide a brief description and the status of each of those. Um, we continue to follow up on these until the corrective action has been implemented. Uh, even if it takes management several years to do that, we have been following up on those, which is um, kind of brings us to the next item on your agenda, where uh, the agenda item is risk acceptance. If, if you, you look, look at the, the first, first um, um, if we can go, I'm, I'm sorry. Is that me turning that? No, no, it's Christina. Christina, Christina can we get the other? Um, yeah, yeah, the one we had up before, before that. Yeah, yeah thanks. If you, if you look, look at the first item, item here, um, report, report number 2019-03, that was made over, that, that, that was published over four years ago, and, and we've been following up on that one for over three and a, it's been over three and a half years now. Um, so what the IG and myself are proposing going forward is to stop following up on, on recommendations if they're more than three years old and documenting that management has assumed the risk of not implementing the recommendation. And Ms. Michael, I don't know if you want to elaborate on that a little. Yes, I mean, as you can tell, we, we have a report that uh, the original findings was, I think it was like 2018. And since that time, we have been following up every six months. Um, during this whole process, there's been some legislative changes and changes with DHSMV, which also have added more issues to this um, problem. Now, at the state level, normally, like a year and a half, almost two years, they, they say if you haven't corrected it, you management is accept, basically accepted that risk, that, that they're not going to be able to correct it or that they're going to kind of roll the dice. Uh, my, my concern, concern is that this one is um, some policy, policy implementation that required um, by both DHSMV, um, and this is something that is just, it, we're not making progress on this. And at this point, um, in my opinion, management has accepted that risk. If you haven't corrected it in this amount of time, for whatever reason, it, the risk has been accepted. Is management being... Board. The district, yes, and the school board. Right. Well, it's the it's the, the superintendent. The yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I, I would I would disagree with with the comment that the district is accepting the risk. It's just taking longer to implement because this is not something that we can implement on our own. We have to do this in collaboration with um, uh, what is it the motor vehicles. The, the, and so it has been challenging. It's, it's been challenging, challenging working with them, them as, as well as challenging with our internal staffing. Okay. We have, um, it, going, it involves not only the transportation department, but our ERP department um, to try to uh, extract this information. And uh, we have to have an MOU with the Department of Motor Vehicles in order to give this information. Uh, we used to receive it. I mean, that was the problem is we used to receive it. There was a change in the law where we're now only, and Mr. Sanchez could correct me, we're only receiving it for our drivers, our bus drivers, and it's now being withheld for uh, any drivers that are not driving an actual yellow bus. And so the, the motor, Department of Motor Vehicles has been very restrictive on providing that information out. Uh, so we are, um, it, it has been on, on the list. It's, and... And, and like, like I said, staffing has been difficult in our ERP department. So even with our ESSER funds, we've added additional temporary positions, um, consultants to help with the backlog uh, of, um, of projects that haven't been implemented. And it has been difficult for us to even hire consultants to assist us. You know, so it's, it's not that we're not trying to get through the backlog. Uh, but, but, it, but it, it definitely has, has been challenging. So it, it, we have now, we've implemented the supplement process, which, which, which is one of the other items that was on this report. That is going live uh, for this school year. And so now the team has shifted to work and make this a priority. And I have made sure with, uh, the, with my department, the department that falls under me, ERP, that any finding that relates to uh, a finding from the audit committee 
is now going to be prioritized. So in the past, that wasn't one of the considerations. And I said, anything that is an audit committee recommendation has, has to be a high priority and take precedence. Because there, there were other things that were, were, were coming prior to this. And, and, that's, and that was the, the issue with, the, uh, uh, with it not being implemented, as well as the difficulties with working with the Department of Motor Vehicles. Yeah, I would like to, I mean, clarify, I wasn't clear. The, I understand that the MOU with DHSMV is difficult. I understand there's been changes in the law. You have to, there's procurements and everything. I think that my, my issue on accepting the risk was there's no policies or procedures that since 2018, we've been working on developing policies and procedures and the policies and procedures have not been developed. And that's something within the district's control um, that hasn't been implemented. And that is what one of the things that I'm looking at as far as the, the district, district has assumed the risk for that, that process. process. I understand you can't. That's different. Just okay. 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 All, All right. So, so I, because I thought I took it to mean that we weren't going to comply, and we, we, we are trying to comply. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, just taking longer. So I'm just curious. I'm just curious in your your suggestion if this would come off. What, what happens, happens in that process? Does it get notified to the school board? Hey, this is one of our findings for the past two years. We're now taking it off and we're not tracking it anymore. It's on, it, hey, it's on you. Like, what, what's the process of that in your, your recommendation? Normally, the, the, what it is is that the, the audit committee would make a recommendation that at this point, because there has not been significant movement, that, that you have accepted the risk that entails not having those policies and procedures and that in place. And, and now it, the, 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 the district, the board, is on notice that this is, a, this is something that you are, sometimes it's the juice isn't worth the squeeze type thing or the materiality that we brought up before it happens all the time. So we just work I get your point. Like if you're tracking this for three years, you're using a lot of resources to keep following up on something that's not happening as quickly, right, because of things, things that are happening. happening. So, so I was just curious in the process to then say, well, well here's school board, here's your list, I'm taking this off now, just so you know. So, so, so like they get a notification, hey, this is coming off. off. Right. And, and so they, they, they're, they're noticed, yeah, they're, they're noticed that you are now assuming the risk associated with these findings not being corrected. Mr. Barbieri, what is your position on that statement, please? I mean, if we're waiting on a policy that's not been been brought before the board, I think that's a mistake by the administration. I mean, if there's if you're taking them off because there's no policies in place, and that's inexcusable. I mean, if we need a policy, tell us we need a policy and we'll get it done. Uh, you can't just stop reporting you know, this information because we don't have a policy and you've been waiting for it. Uh, well, you get that information to the superintendent so we can bring a policy. He can bring a policy for for the board to correct this. Okay, I, can I make a um, recommendation? Uh, make a motion that we establish a policy for this issue. And address it and send it to the board. Let's get it off the table here. You want to have time frame to that motion? motion on the floor? Yeah, within, within, within how much time do we need? Well, well, you, all you have to do is send the message. Right. So we have to send the message, right? So I think we should probably hear from the chief operating officer right. on this issue as well, right. since we're this is impacting what he does okay. in his job. All right. Again, uh, good morning, Joe Sanchez, chief operating officer. So, um, it's, it's not, not a matter of not wanting to do a policy. It's a matter of being able to do a policy that we can then comply with, right? So we have to, uh, you know, if we have to work with other organizations, including outside organizations uh, from the district, that's going to hold us accountable, that, that makes us accountable to the, to the board. It doesn't make sense for us to put, to, to put a policy in place that we can't comply with. So that's, I think that's part of the challenge. And I don't want to, I don't want to put that in all the details of, the, in, you know, the integration between that has to happen with the state and um, FTE and all this together, but uh, it's that's I think that's part of the challenge is that we just have to make sure that we all have no put in we don't create a policy that we just can't comply with. Yeah, because I agree. I'm sure this takes time. So my thought, if I were to have a motion, would say, hey, maybe after two years of you following up, it gets notified to the school board superintendent, and then they have another year after that. And, and if nothing's, nothing's done after that, that then, then it comes, comes off. off. Like, like that would be kind of more, more my thought, maybe. That, 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 I mean, again, on all these recommendations and follow-ups, it, it's, it's not done in a vacuum. vacuum. The, you know, the superintendent and Heather is very involved with all of these. And this isn't something that, that just, you know, Mr. Sanchez and I have talked about, you know. But at what point, I guess, does you know, Frank, Alex, and you know, everybody on the, the school board here. I could, two years, you know, and then we can do a formal 
and then a year later, a risk acceptance is done. I mean, that would become probably more my motion. So, like, because I agree, the CEO, CFO, they, you, it's not a vacuum. They all know superintendent. But at some point, then, if, not, if nothing, no policy has been instituted, then let's say, hey, school board, this is what we've been working on the two years. Nothing's been done yet. And then if a year after that, then you go to the school board. Now we're taking off the list. Like, you've had it for a year to do what you want with it and follow up with the superintendent. I mean, that would be, I think, it. I think we're talking about. I think we're talking about two things here. Number one, we don't have a policy. You're talking about a policy that we have that stays on the on, on this. I don't think. Well, I I, I think that's more the policy. I don't think we can write a policy for this. I'm with the COO. I don't think they're at a point you could tell them you have 60 days to write a policy on this matter. I don't think that's gonna happen. It sounds like they've been trying for three years to try and come up with something they can follow. I think it's more. Our job is to figure out the policy of saying how does the school board get noticed and how do they know? Because now. Now, now Frank, Frank and, the, and, the and the school board can know, okay, something's, something's been going on for three years, years nothing's been done yet. Well, I'm, I'm not saying nothing's been done, but we'll say no, no policy has been written. written. School board, you're on notice. And if a, if a year after the school board being on notice and nothing's still done, why does, you know, the IGs you know, keep spending their resources checking up on this every six months? I mean, I think that's more our concern than whether or not they write a policy on this in 60 days. I don't think that's for us to, to mandate the COO and them to do. Or whatever, I'm saying whatever the date is. I don't think that's for us to, to tell them. I think our job is more to be the notifier and have a policy for notifying when this stuff isn't happening. But you also have certain issues that you shouldn't stop following up on. Say it's, say it's an issue that's very complicated to put a policy in place for, but there, there is no acceptable risk. So to stop following up on it, there's, I think there's going to be certain issues that you should never stop following up on. That the IG should never stop following up on? Yes, that, that, or that the issue is so concerning, but it's so complicated that it might take five years to issue that you shouldn't take it off the list if it's that concerning. I don't know if the, any of these issues are that, that type, but there should be some part of the policy going, this type of issue, say it's an extremely like, safety issue, I would assume that, that this policy would get through. It would make, find a way to get it through. But say it's something that's so complicated, should it be taken off the list if it's a safety concern? I just, I just think if it's say, taken off the IG's list, but maybe it's still the school board's list for five years or something, I don't know. I think that um, when you make your report to the school district, that you might want to share that to the school board, that you might want to share that this has been an issue for five years and that the IG's approach on a go-forward basis is going to be X. We follow up for a certain period of time, and then we then assume that if there's no action taken, that the risk level is acceptable to the school board and school district, and we will move on. And see what kind of response you get, because they're either going to be very much in favor or very much against it, and I think that has to have some impact on how we handle things and when we're talking about a safety issue, especially. Ms. McDonald, is that your motion? At any time, the board can say, continue to monitor. We're not going to accept this risk. We're, you know, we want you to continue to monitor. And same as the audit committee, you all can tell me, no. You know, like Mr. Mymaster said, uh, we want you to continue. Again, this is my proposal. Um, this is something that is kind of uh, standard as far as after so many years, if you have not made, you have not corrected it, you're essentially going, we can't correct it, or there's things that are, are blocking it, so we're going to kind of accept that. So, right. like, if I said, like, a motion in the thought of saying, after two years, you know, it comes to our attention, and you say we're notifying the school, the school board, and if after a year after that you come back to us and say, hey, we're going to take this off our list, we could do kind of a similar recommendation like we did with Dave Talley, saying, no, don't take this off your list, keep it for another year. I think that's a perfectly fine motion. After two years, it gets notified to the school board. Not, not just the, the superintendent never involved, and then after, after three years, it's, it's brought back up to us to approve you taking off the list. list. Right, and then we would present, present it to the board for their approval to actually remove it, because you would make the recommendation to the board if I'm have it removed, I guess. Right. Or, Ms. Yeah. Uh, I don't like uh, any suggestion that the school board is accepting the risk on a safety issue. <laughs> when, when we sit in these closed sessions that you all don't get to see and hand out hundreds of thousands of dollars on a monthly basis because somebody didn't do something that they were supposed to do, some employee in the district. So 
I don't agree, Mr. Sanchez, that you can't have a policy. I understand the policy may have to have some conditions that, you know, we can do this, this, and this, but we're, con you know, it's contingent on getting the information from motor vehicles. But, you know, to, to say that, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to report it anymore because the board has taken the risk. No, 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 the board is not taking risk on safety, bio, safety violations. That needs to be brought to the attention of the board, and a policy needs to put in place to make sure that if there is a problem, at least, you know, you can show that the board took action and put a policy in place and, you know, did not accept the risk. So well, that would be my, that's kind of my recommendation, after two years, it goes to you guys, and then you guys can find out for a year, going, you better get a policy in place and get this fixed. And if after three years, we can put the motion and say, yeah, take it off, the list. I, don't I don't think the IG needs, needs to keep spending their time on this. And, and then you, know, you, you can, can say, no, keep, keep spending your time on it. I, I just think at some, some point there should be a standard point where it's not the IG's problem, it's the school board's and the you know, employee's problem. I'm limited on the knowledge that I have because I cannot attend. I'm prohibited from attending the closed sessions. So I don't know what is going on in those closed sessions when they're discussing risk issues, cybersecurity issues, safety issues. So there may be a complete discussion going on where they've addressed this issue, but I'm not privy to those discussions. Yes. I just wanted to let everybody know that there is currently a major policy revision um, review going on. I am going to, I promise, I'm gonna work with, um, with both Mr. Sanchez's office and the IG um, with regard to a policy, I'm going to bring that forward to the Office of General Counsel so that we can start working with our partners in getting a policy put together and getting the MOU with the um, Department of Motor Vehicles so that we can get this done. Um, this is, you know, the first it's brought, been brought to my attention. We will work on it. It will be a priority, I promise. So may I go back and make a motion, please? <laughs> Um, I move that your report to the super, to the um, to the board indicate what has been done or since 2019, and that no policy has been put in place. We are concerned about the risk management, and our recommendation is that a policy must be put in place um, over the next 12 months. Is that if that's reasonable? I think it is. Um, so that and 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 if it's not, then we would be, uh, we would move to remove it and indicate that the risk level has been accepted. And then we have something to audit. If there's a policy, you have something to audit. Right exactly. now, you have nothing to audit. Hey, discussion on the motion? I'd like to make include that it's being addressed right now. Okay. I'd like to add that to your motion. Acceptable. Okay? Yes. It's a secondary accept. Okay, okay so let, let me clarify one, one thing. thing. We, we have jumped, jumped from 7.1 to 7.2, so your motion and recommendation is going to be to approve item 7.2 as stated. Is that correct? Because we started out looking at the overall, and we jumped down to the next item, and we're now discussing 7.2. So that's appropriate. Yes, 7.2. A motion to approve this would be to approve 7.2, is that correct? Which is a prior recommendation, risk That is correct. Okay. That is correct. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Pass 7-0. Now we'll go back up to the first item, 7.1, the recommendation implementation status report. I'll recommend the motion to approve the report as shown. So move, Mr. Chair. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Pass is 7-0. Okay, Bob, we'll go on to uh, 7.3, please. Thank you. Uh, this is mostly as an FYI. Um, this is a quarterly report that summarizes our contract and procurement-related activities. Um, in there, you'll see we attended the three monthly construction oversight and review committee meetings that were held as well as the quarterly independent sales surtax oversight committee, com committee meeting. Uh, we also attended four contract evaluation committee meetings, and those meetings had a total contract value of more than $8 million. On page 10, I'll go real quick. We're currently working on a review of um, subcontractor default insurance, which is a type of insurance that third-party 
construction managers purchase for some of our larger construction projects. And um, the summary of that is here. Uh, our main objective of this, well, what happens is the district reimburses the construction managers um, for this expense that they incur. So our objective of this review would be to determine if the amounts billed to the district were accurate. And we're almost done with that review. And when we finish, we will present our findings to you through a separate written report. All right. Is this a comment where you're saying there's 73,000 dollars being refunded? Is that what you're saying? No, that was from a prior. It's just an example. Yeah, that was a prior review we presented to you a year or two ago. And what we're doing is because of that amount of money, that circumstance that occurred, we are expanding this topic and looking at it a little closer over some other projects. Okay, any other comments? I'll accept a motion to approve this report. I'll make a motion to approve. I have a second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Pass to 7 0. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate it. Uh, item 8 is just FYI. Joyce has sent out these reports to you, so it's, again, it's just an F they are FYI items. Uh, are there any general comments to come before our committee? I'd like to um, comment on something. When, we, when the penny sales tax was enacted, um, there was a component that required, I don't know if it was self-imposed or however it happened, but there was a component that said that a certain percentage or that there was going to be um, diversity and inclusion of minority contractors. And we did an audit um, one year, I don't remember how many years ago it was, to look at how that was, how the contracts were being awarded and to make sure that minority contractors were included in the award process. I don't know if any of the action that's been done in Tallahassee has affected um, the ability of the school board to enforce that and do that. But I'm just wondering where we are and if, if, and if it is included anywhere in the audit plan for the year to go back and audit and review and see how we're, um, I know there's an oversight committee that, the, you know, that does look over that, but from, from an IG standpoint to, look, to make sure that we're complying with whatever we committed to do and um, that those monies are being properly spent and the process is still in place to ensure that the contracts are um, let to minorities as well. I don't, I don't know if we, we have, have that on the audit plan, plan for next year. year. I don't believe we do, do we? Not for this year. If you're talking about the uh, NWBE's uh, uh, participation, we did have an audit a uh, few years ago, at least maybe five years ago. Now, if uh, you know, the audit committee would like us to uh, include it in the next year work plan, I'll make some adjustment to it and then include it in that to do uh, like a follow-up on that part. I'd like to see that. Okay. Okay. I can second that. Yeah, that's, that's no problem. problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have we have we have done one procurement on a. Uh, I believe it, it was originally um, or an investigation or review on the background screening. You, you right. may remember that had to do with you know a, a minority business provider using a piggy bank uh, you know in an emergency so we did do one review that was similar to that in the past but we can put it on thank you okay. any other comments maybe maybe that cycle that you do it every 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 five or however many years but that it's planned as a part of the a cycle in your in the audit planning process we can definitely do that thank you I just want to say I, I really appreciate all of you as uh, committee members. So uh, there's been a lot of good input today. I know the meeting's gone real long, but uh, I really appreciate all of your efforts. It's nice to see that everyone participates. Uh, are there any other comments? If not, our next meeting. Pardon? Our next meeting is scheduled to be Friday, September 15th. And if there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.